morning y'all. Gonna talk shoulder turn again today. Anyone who's watching any of my videos recently talked about turning my shoulders more, see what it could do. Let's show you what it's doing. So you can see how a change for me is affecting me or not positively and negatively because all changes have those kind of, the trouble with golf, it's like a seesaw, you're constantly trying to balance it and it's never really set, it's often way off kilter and there's a few times where you get it in that sweet spot. Kind of what keeps coming back for more, kind of what gives me a job really, kind of why we're all on the internet searching for that magic elixir. It seems a little bit at the moment. Like it doesn't matter who we search from as well. <laughs> oh, it's the wild, wild west of YouTube. Yeah. Right, we're at Torquay. There's Dan over there, just setting up the computer. Hello. Oh, hello Danny, I've got my sensors on. Let's measure where my shoulder turn is. Dan's watched me play with a bit of shoulder turn, which you haven't watched yet, because the video's going out, I haven't got this in if you're watching the course vlogs at the moment. Um, and we'll show if there's any pluses, any, you know, any pros, any cons, and if it's something I should continue doing. Capture just coming in. So my chest rotation, how much I'm resting, um, turning, twisting my chest. So again, I said shoulder, try not to think of shoulder, because I can move shoulders very independently. Of, from my chest, so it's more about how much chest kind of range of movement you've got in there. So my chest turn now is maxing out at around 87 degrees. Prior to this, it was in the low 70s, high 60s. So considerably more shoulder turn for me. That's with a seven iron, same happening throughout the bag. I'm doing the same ideas with all. It's definitely something I feel I can put into my game. You played one 18 holes with me trying to turn my shoulder. Actually, 18 and a 9, I think we played, did we? Yeah, yeah has that gone out uh, yet? No, it hasn't, but it'll right. come out soon when we did a stroke today, 9. Um, and there's definitely a bit of movement in my game, arguably uh, in a non-positive way at the moment, I would say. What would you say? Uh, uh, well, I'm seeing positives in the fact that I definitely see you hitting it a little bit further. Yeah. Definitely seeing it on the golf course, not just in what your numbers you're producing in here. Um, but I just, you ha I don't think it's going to take you long. I think the more practice you did or put into it, you would, you would see the benefit of that. But definitely I'm seeing more shape with you. You're yeah. tending to sort of really get it moving, turning over a little bit. And it's more your starting position, interestingly. I yeah. think you start it maybe just, you're getting the nice shape, but you're not starting it far enough right to, to deal with it. So let, let's just give you an idea then. So this is a seven iron for me. I'm not particularly warm. But if I just hit a couple, just to show the numbers with this, with that bigger chest rotation, that's quite a decent hit. I mean, if you look at that, so that was a 157 carry for me with a seven. So that's hitting into a green at 160 to, you know, you put a flag out there at 165. Yeah. I would always be hitting soft sixes and sixes in there. But if I can do, bigger shoulder turn and try and hit it harder, so my harder six iron, that's 158 on a slight toe hit. So 158 on some greens is ending up 162, three yards short, happy with that, or it's getting, it's short of the flag, but it's probably on the green as long as it's not tucked and then I would hit yeah. a six iron. So I definitely feel like I'm pushing I would say around five to seven, maybe 10 yards out of medium irons, extra distance yeah. with chest turn and more. But the problem I get is like that, that's 151, it's just a real toe hit. Yeah, yeah. So your, your strike is changing with all this? It's not as good, it's more variable yeah. as I try to do this. So the balance that we're gonna have to, or I'm gonna have to find out is, is it worth hitting more worse hits to get the longer, more lofty clubs into greens? Mm. So does, does that just balance itself off so it's actually not worth doing it? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Or is there a gain at some point, which we'll have a go. There's a part of me that also thinks, obviously, if I was actually still playing and practicing like I used to, I don't know if I would still miss hit it. No, I, uh, this is what I said earlier, really. I, I feel like I'm, so look at that one. That's a ripper. And a seven iron, bladed seven iron. So you got to remember, this is a true lofted seven for me. Oh, just get that ball out, sorry. It's... 162, swing six, yeah. 
I mean, I think we go to our warm countries, I'm easily carrying that 165 with a, appropriate strike and chest rotation. Yeah. But I think you would get this. But I'm I not don't. sure. You just, you just, I just don't feel like you've got the practice time in you at this point for you to really get this to work quickly. Yeah, but I definitely feel like there's going to have to be... I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to be inconsistent for a bit, yeah. which is something that I think the audience, certainly me, I'm not being used to seeing there, but used to seeing me just kind of be there and thereabouts. Yeah. Um, I had one comment over the weekend on the video saying, God, you go all that way and you play like that, can't you just try a bit harder? He, like, he was like upset, I was like, I was hard as I can. <laughs> <laughs> I just played <laughs> crap. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. Um, this is what excites me as well. We could do some little maths on this. Look. I'm going to try it with a driver. So it's the same with all clubs I'm trying to um, turn. I think you can actually visually see it. Yeah, I can see that. That I'm actually, because my hands get higher, I'm not so kind of like just stuck here with yeah. the wrist going. Yeah. Um, again, not really as warm as it should be. Let's just strike a couple. <laughs> Bit of a high toe. Yeah, that's not good. There you go. That, look at that one. That's where this is dangerous, and you see that shot a bit on the course, don't you? That's a two-two-four carry. Yeah, that, that, that strike. Yeah. This is complete missing. Less than a thousand revs on that. Yeah. <laughs> That's quite impressive. Yeah. I think that's a little bit of what's happened with my golf over the years as well. Yeah. Is I've turned into a film vlog golfer. We don't warm up, we don't practice. No. I want to be in the video as much as possible because nothing, it's the worst feeling in the world, isn't it? How much fun is flying around the world and holding the camera? I enjoy it. No, but you know what I mean? As yeah. in, if you're holding the camera, what does that mean? You're not playing much golf. You're out the hole. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so not only have you got down. the worst crap, the worst job, you, you're, you're watching three other people play a hole that you yeah. want to play. Mm. Um, so there's a part of me that feels like I've worked it out for my environment a bit. Does that make sense? Yeah, but you've... I just want to be in the hole and playing the course and not holding that camera. So I just kind of get on patting it, you know. I'm not picking it up, basically. Sounded better. Yeah, no, look at that. Look at that. I don't do that and I am now doing that. And this is really excites me. If you give me five or ten yards on an iron, yeah. that's a two seven seven carry. Carry. Give me a Those five fifty are... yard hole. So let's do the maths. How long do you want to call that? Let's call that three hundred yards for argument's sake for maths. Yeah. Five fifty yard hole. I'm two fifty now. Is that right? Yeah. If you look at that, it's not a bad hit, going relatively at target. So 277 carry and a 242 carry. Add whatever roll you want on. So do the maths. Right, We're rubbish at maths, aren't we? Yeah, five five nineteen. That's without roll. That's five nineteen on the fly. So if the hole is two fifty, that doesn't mean the front edge is two fifty. Uh, five fifty, does it? No. That means the front edge it's might be five twenty. Yeah. So I'm seventeen yards away from pitching the front edge. Two six two, and then a two thirty carry. It's not close enough, is it? And that's where you're putting into that nice, <coughs> nice little danger zone of yours, aren't you? Well, the question now, which we don't know the answer to, are rather mishits and the lack of directional control, which hopefully will come, yeah. worth the trade-off for potential 243 carry like that, that is there, look, if you look at that one. That's a 243 off the deck. 242. Two, two. Yeah. Two four two. And look at it. I mean, it's. I just start that a bit down the right. It's dead straight, and that's. And that's, and that's what I'm saying to you here, though. If you look at those. If you look at that, everything just just sort of tails off to the left. But it's because I think you just start it too straight all the time. Yeah. Well, that's to do with me working out what my patterns are now with this, which I'm still doing. Yeah. 
And I think this is the thing that makes golfers stop learning sometimes. I've seen it in lessons. So one thing I've never been scared of, in fact, in my golf and lots of things in my life I've always been excited about, is change. Like, I love it. Yeah. That excites me. Let's try this. Let's try that. Where when if you take the safety net of someone hitting the fairway all, all the time away and give them well 10 yards more carry off the tee 15 yards more carry off the tee, tee plus then another let's do 10 for our basic crap maths with an iron that's 27 yards extra carry per hole that's huge for me yeah. in my mind so i think i'll put up well this will bite me on the arse because i'll put up with hitting it a bit more offline to see if that extra carry does make any difference I do hate, my biggest hate in golf is being in my pocket. I know everyone hates it, but I reckon Matt hates it less than me. <laughs> you see what I, and I reckon Rory hates it less than me because it's built into their, like Matt would hate duffing a chip more yeah, yeah. than I would. Like I hate it, but like I've got too busy to really, really fix it, so I'll do the best I can. Mm that's what he brings, so to that to go would be demoralising for him, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, at the moment, I feel like at the moment, and I'm not sure if I get there, with a little bit of technique work, see look at that one, drop right there. That, yeah, Ooh. but that's, that started further right, didn't it? Yeah, because it's a high tone, so my club has helped. Right, there. okay. Carrying two, five, seven. Oh, two by five, but this spin is again under under two thousand under one thousand revs. Yeah, because this is a little high for me, yeah. which is why I'm getting it noticeably higher. But I feel like I could get a two eighty. The two six two days, like a two seventy would blend the socks off. Yeah, but I feel like everything in place, turn, little bit of vertical force, and me trying to swipe it fast. I think a 280 is in me a bit high in the face again, but look, I mean 262 just doesn't exist. 268 on a pretty average. So it's more, because lots of your, like even your best one there at 277, the spin was at 1.5, so I think that's more high strike. Yeah, you it? can see it. Well, I need, I'll tee it up a bit lower, shall I? I mean, I'm hitting them all up here. Yeah. I just need to get Dropping it. Drop a spin out of Yeah. I think the potential of a 280 carry for me is worth the experiment. And for me, I think it's the best teaching lesson you can do. Like lots of golfers that I teach and talk to and play with, their reluctancy to experiment holds back their potential to improve or find out if there is a different road that is better. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure if this is the right road, I don't know, but how am I ever going to know? Unless I try it. So that's a 272. It's 10 yards more carry than my average to good hit with my I'm going to pad it down every fairway. There you so. go, that's more like it, because then you're getting the 2 2 spin yeah. with it. Yeah. That's more like it. Yeah, 154 ball speed. So T height there making a big impact. Yeah, on that occasion, definitely. Um, the fact that I feel like I could get a 280 makes me feel like when we play and you get in those situations where it's the 320 yard par 4 downhill and you can get there, yeah. I could, I've got an option where before it would be Pat and then Pitch where Matt would have the option to go and you definitely would now. Um, I like it. I, don't, I think you've got to because I don't think your mind will cope. With knowing that it's there. Yeah, well I will. I you can't I like change. Want it. You yeah. want to get to that. That's before any real exercise. If I do what I should have done with TPI. Yeah. I thought you were doing that still. I need to do it again. I've got a little lax on it. <laughs> um two eighty carries well in there. Yeah. Basically. Definitely. It's good to see. It's good to see. So the big question now to pose, which is a that's like add-on. Have you got a TMB5 iron flying around? I did a little gap test the other day and I feel like this one might need to be a little friendlier. Yeah. <laughs> well, have you got an AP1 5-iron? Uh, yeah. Don't need TMB actually, do I? I could just end the... I love these. So, Absolutely love so these. So when I did my gap test, my 5-iron gets too close to my 6-iron. 
good. But it doesn't if I hit it really well. Yeah. But, but the strike varies off. a bit. Great. Which is, you can see obviously why I'm using my 23 all the time. Yeah. And I relate this more to my shoulder turn as well because the five iron is dropping off more than it ever did because I'm trying to turn more, so the strikes are a bit more varied. So it's pairing up with the six iron, which yes. is not as varied because I can hit that one. Um, so that's very similar to what I've just put out, or we've just put out with our stand on yeah. the four iron testing. It's the drop offs, isn't it? Yeah, so I feel like the five iron needs to be power back, needs to be stronger possibly. So I can get it, yes, yeah, so that's a two, that's a one nine one five iron. A one nine, um, so what's your six iron carry? Like one seven two one seven five. The so trouble is, the... this five iron only rips to one eight five. It only rips to one so eight the... five. Let me just do one to confirm because I'm almost beefing it this morning. So that's a good five iron. Yeah, that's one eight two. And the trouble is I can get a six iron at one seven eight. So the question is, I thought it might be me, but it might actually be you. Who's going to be the first person to carry two six irons or two five irons? <laughs> in the yeah, two six <laughs> Let's leave that conversation there because it gets interesting, that one, and we'll come back to it. So for me, like I said in the video, I'm really excited about change, but you can see how easily it is to get into ruts with change, isn't it? I mean, my swing ideas of hitting fairway has definitely been built around the people stroke games that I'm playing. Why push myself if I'm playing okay in those situations? Which is a valid and fair point. You know, if you're playing with your mates every week and you have good fun games, why make that difference? But I enjoy change. I enjoy pushing myself. And the reason I do it most, well, kind of mostly is it helps me become better as a coach because I can share my students' struggles, mine struggles with things changing. So like I say, you know, I'm hitting it further. You can see that I'm hitting it much further, which can make a massive difference for me. But if I lose that directional uh, capability that is definitely one of my skills, how much is that gonna harm me? I'm really keen to explore that, to see if I can be better, because I feel like I can always run back to that safe place if I need to. So it's a good lesson in learning for me, this video, for myself and hopefully you down the lens, and how, definitely trying to push yourself as much as possible. I think for so many golfers who want to improve, it's just a real skill and something we can all be better at. Definitely enjoying the added power from turning my shoulders more. This doesn't mean turning your shoulders more, you hit the ball further, but definitely I had a lot more range of movement and getting my chest to rotate more. And when I've captured using 4D motion and other capture devices in the past, you see it massively in many, many students who don't have the range of movement maybe they should. You help them improve their range of movement. It helps them improve their club paths, distances, those kind of ideas. Post comments down below. Let me know if you're going through changes yourself. How are you getting on? Are they working or they're not? What are you going through? Post comments down there. You know, what's improved and what's dropped back? Do you feel like you're going forward or do you feel like you're going backwards but you'll go forward at some point? Let me know, as always. Have a great weekend. I hope the weather's all right. It's a bit shocking here today, but I hope you get to play this weekend. See you all next week.